not know it, but my favorite video game genre are racing games. There's just something about driving a vehicle at breakneck speeds and beating other opponents to a finish line that is so... satisfying. I've spent years playing hundreds of these games, and while a lot of them are my favorite games of all time, there are a lot of really bad ones as well. I'm going to be counting down what I believe to be the worst forgotten racing games ever created because the world needs to know that there are worse games out there than Big Rigs Over the Road Racing and Sonic R. Those games can be cheap laughs because of how flawed and broken they are, but these next six games are beyond flawed and broken. These games are slow, boring, have horrible controls, and some of the most absurd game-breaking glitches you will ever witness. So let's get started, shall we? Let's begin with the game that appears to be the most innocent. Pinewood Derby. Yeah, the Pinewood Derby. You know, that racing event that Cub Scouts do? Wouldn't it be great if there was a game based off of it? Apparently the developer Imagine Engine thought so. Start in the body shop by selecting your beautiful wood. Sand, polish, and graphite those tires. Then paint the wood in only the ugliest solid colors possible. Oh, you made a mistake? Sorry buddy, you'll have to deal with it because there's no undo button. Don't forget the decals! Yeah, that looks okay. Oh my goodness! Then distribute the weight and add as much crap as you want to make the car heavier. Finally, select from a grand total of, get this, not one, not two, but a grand total of three tracks. Holy shit, there's just so many to choose from. I can't possibly just pick one. Eh, that'll do. I... I don't even know what to say. This is, without a doubt, the worst officially released PC game I have ever seen. This was raided by the ESRB and sold in stores. Someone paid $20 for this at Best Buy. I don't understand this. How do you make a 2008 game look this bad? These polygonal graphics are comparable to Club Drive, and that was released 14 years earlier on a much inferior console. The resolution makes it even worse, as it's fixed at 800 by 600 making the game seem 10 years older than it actually is. Now to be fair, you don't have to have good graphics to make a good game, so what about the actual races? Well, because this is the Pinewood Derby, the races involve zero gameplay. You simply watch the cars go down the track. Oh, I get it. It's fun. It's not fun. You can see different results if you change how the car is weighted, but watching these races over and over again with very little variety is just... Well, it's not exciting. Now, the Pinewood Derby is a competition, but this game seriously lacks it because there is no multiplayer to speak of. Here, the only competition is the generic AI, so you can only see if your crappy car can beat the other crappy cars known as Mr. Red, Mr. Blue, and Mr. Yellow. Though I will give it this, you can race the other cars you've created so you can see which one is the fastest and which ones deserve to sit in the naughty corner. However, the game's biggest problem is that you can lose a race, play the same race again against the same opponents, and then suddenly win, along with a faster time. Even though you made no changes to the car. This also occurs when all four cars in the race are the same, so it makes the game feel like there is a payout rate present similar to a slot machine. Yeah, you know what? Actually, this game is a slot machine in disguise. You see, the tracks are the different casinos. The opponents are the different slots. You can play the same slot machine over and over again, and the outcome will always be 100% random. The more times you play the machine, the more opportunities there are to win. If you want more opportunities, you may need to go to a bank to withdraw. The different shops represent the different banks, and depending on the bank, the interest rates will vary. The banks in Pinewood Derby must have extremely low interest rates, just like banks in real life. The amount of time that money sits in a bank is equivalent to the amount of time you spend working on the car, and you know the old saying, 
time is money. You may believe that more time equals more wins, but you're playing a slot machine without even knowing it, so it doesn't matter. Half of the banks in Pinewood Derby give you 0% interest, because if you spend time painting or changing the wood, that is a huge mistake because you will get nothing in return. You may believe that the power of aerodynamics and a crap ton of eagles will increase your chances, but in reality, the game calculates a different win percentage each and every time. Then you can toss in the factor of a gambling addiction. Some people go to the casino several times a month and lose lots of money because they are obsessed with the idea that they might be able to win the jackpot. The slots in Pinewood Derby don't have a jackpot, nothing to keep you coming back for more, nothing to unlock, no rewards, what you see is what you get. The only source of possible satisfaction is that confetti, which is virtual confetti, so who the hell cares? If you keep playing at the same track, <clears throat> casino, against the same opponents, <clears throat> slots, without making changes to the car, you'll find that sometimes you'll win, and sometimes you'll lose, but this creates confusion to the average player, so they'll have to go back to the banks, <clears throat> shops, to get money, <clears throat> improvements, when in reality, it doesn't matter at all. Pinewood Derby is a game of luck and tries to appeal to those who are not yet at the legal age to gamble. The building elements serve as a cover-up to entice kids into using their creativity even though it does not matter in the actual game. This game of chance exposes children to forms of gambling that is based on luck so that they can become addicted to real-world luck-based games such as The Slot Machine Roulette Big Six Wheel Powerball Pachinko Scratchers Bingo betting on a horse race with a blindfold on. And of course, everyone's favorite, Russian Roulette. This theory could be debatable if a very similar outcome kept occurring, but the game simply defies logic. I'm positive that if you race the same opponents again and again in the real-life Pinewood Derby, the outcome would barely change. I can't say that from a first-hand experience, but let's look at something similar, like this Hot Wheels four-lane racetrack. Okay, if we race the same cars 10 times without altering them or the track, the winner is always the same. This game is not the accurate Pinewood Derby simulator it is trying to be because the outcomes of the races and times are all over the place. No two races are the same, even though all the present factors are and it just doesn't add up why it had to be this way. And when you win races by the luck of the draw, it is far from exciting. Yippee, I won. For a Pinewood Derby simulator, and perhaps the only one in existence, it is very flawed. But even if the game's logic was correct, the graphics are still dated upon release, and we're still talking about a racing game that involves zero interactivity with the races. This type of racing just doesn't translate well into a video game. It's just not fun watching races that feel too similar on top of outcomes that you can't control. You are literally playing a video game where the main mode only allows you to watch, not play. In fact, watching any real-life race of any kind is way more entertaining than this game. And I am not exaggerating. This is simply an unpleasing experience that no one could possibly enjoy for more than five minutes due to the insanely high level of boredom that is endured. Pinewood Derby is really one of the few games where you can say, well, I wish I spent that $20 at the casino instead, because you just played a virtual slot machine without even knowing it. Actually, can you imagine your local casino having a row of Pinewood Derby slot machines? That would be amazing. I mean, just take away the building elements and you've got a game that is sure to rack in millions. I did it! I won a lifetime supply of confetti! Hey there, thanks a lot for watching the video. It certainly means a lot to me. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Both of those things really help me out. We've got plenty more terrible forgotten racing games to cover, so if you wish to watch the next part, that episode is right here. For video updates and other random jazz, you can follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description below. I will see you guys in the next episode of Forgotten Games, and thank you again for watching. Have a good one.
What's in there? 